tonight's clan leader, obviously the best clan, is Gold Paladin with Richard Gilroy. Yeah! yeah. Is that Richard from Nexus Core? <laughs> Have my children! And now what you've all been waiting for, the Gold Paladin clan leader deck profile. And yes, these are Pelinor sleeves. Let's begin. We're just gonna keep this here so y'all don't forget who I am. Starting off, our starter is Knight of Early Dawn Coel, as is tradition. And for our main grade three, because there's only one obvious ride target choice, is the very famous and well-known Golden Holy Sword, Gurgit. I will now take the time to explain the skill of every individual card so that we may know how I won these games. First off with its Generation Break 2 Unite ability. Unite is active when two or more units have been called to Rear or Guardian Circle during the turn. For this unit's Generation Break 2 skill, all of my rear guards gain intercept during the battle that my opponent attacks this unit. I may move them to the guardian circle as intercept from anywhere on the field, including the back row. For its other skill, when a G unit strides onto the unit, I may pay the cost, which is counter blast one, soul blast one. If I do, I can look at the top four cards in my deck, choose a card from among them and call it, shuffle the deck, and if I call the unit with the unite ability, I may call the top card of my deck and call it as rest. So, as you can probably tell, this card is good. Let's move on. For our other grade three, I have decided to up the grade three count of Militant Act Dragon to a total of three copies. Now, Militant Act Dragon has a skill as well, as you probably assumed. The skill is Vanguard or Rear Guard Circle. Mm. I can counter blast one, and if a G unit strides, Van or Rear, I put all of my cards from all of my circles, other than my vanguard, onto the bottom of my deck. And if one or more card is put, I can look at the top three cards in my deck, call up to two of them, and then I can put the rest on the bottom in any order. And specifically, this works with any card, including locked cards. And also, this card can work as a rear guard skill as well. So if I choose to stride, and this card is on my rear guard circle, I may choose to use its skill as well. Now. We are done with the grade threes. Moving on to the grade twos. We will be playing four copies of, not Pelinor, but Knight of Swings Light, Paramore. Paramore's skill is Continuous Unite. If I have called two more cards during the turn, guard or rear circle, it gains 2,000 power. The other skill is Auto Generation Break 1. When this unit is placed on rear, I may pay the cost, and I may counter blast one and look at the top three cards in my deck. Search for one. Call it to the rearguard circle in the same column as this unit. And I can put the rest in the bottom in any order. The purpose of this card is to fill the field. Shocker. Next up, we're going on to a very similar card, but with a much more expensive cost, so to say. The skill is Unite, not GB1, as well. If I have a vanguard with Gurgit in its name, this unit will get 4,000 power. The auto skill is Generation Break 1. I may choose a card from my hand and discard it. When this unit is placed on rear, I may pay the cost. If I do, I look at the top three cards on my deck, call up to one to rear any rear of my choosing, put the rest on the bottom of my deck in any order I choose. We run three of this card because it costs a discard. That is not that great. But we still run it because it gains power, continues superior calling, and it's Pretty decent. Up next, we run three copies of Night of Sunny Day, Solanius. And so Solanius' skill does not have a generation break ability, but as you will soon see, it doesn't matter because you require a grade 4 for its skill. But the first skill is Unite. If I have a grade 4 vanguard with Gurkit in its name, all of my units gain 2000 power. So this helps gain more power to the field. The other skill is Auto not GB1 rear. At the beginning of the guard step that my vanguard with Gurgit in its name is attacked. You may put this card into your soul and call the top two cards of your deck to the guardian circle. So this card helps you fill the field, continue guarding, and more importantly, gives your field another 2k just to make your columns bigger. Next up for grade twos, we're running two copies of a fan favorite of mine, Knight of the Remaining Sun. 
Now this card is essentially a combination of Paramore and Canarius, being that its cost is different. Generation Brick 1, and this is placed on rear, I may Can Bless 1 and Soul Bless 1. If I do, I look at the top 3 cards in my deck, search for up to 1 card, and call it. And put the rest on the bottom of my deck in any order. If I have a Vanguard with Gurgit in its name, the called units and this unit both gain 3000 power. So the purpose of this card is, during the battle phase, if I am making more superior calls, if I choose to call this unit, I can use the skill to call another unit from the deck, and they both gain 3000 power, on top of the power they may receive from Heavenly Lawrence Selenius, extending the number of attacks I can do during the turn. We have now finished the grade twos. We will now be moving on to the grade ones. For the grade ones, we are running three copies of Knight of Insulation, Karenus. Karenus' skill is that if I have Vanguard with the Unite ability, it gains resist. And so because Gurgit is the only unit with the Unite ability on grade three, during your opponent's turn, it will essentially only have resist when you have Gurgit as your Vanguard. The other skill is Unite Act, Generation Break 1. I may choose to rest this unit and choose one of my units, and it gains 4,000 power. If I have a Vanguard with Gurge in its name, I choose one of my rear guards, different from the name than this card. And I may, I must not have to, but I may, put it on the bottom of my deck. And if I do, I will draw a card and counter charge one. The purpose of this card is to gain resources with counter charging by resting itself, to draw cards, to put units back on the bottom of my deck, and to keep a unit on the field even if it has resist. Moving on. Now we must move on with Knight of Morning Light Horsa. We are running three copies of Knight of Morning Light Horsa. You all may be familiar with my earlier card being, I believe, a Sunshine Knight Jeffrey, which is the after it boosts, you move it to Soul and Draw. We are deciding to run Horsa instead to gain more power in the deck, especially putting it behind the Vanguard Circle when boosting Helios, as I'll explain in the skill as I read it out loud. Generation Break 1, Unite. When your other unit is placed on the rear guard circle, choose one of your other units in the same column as this unit, and that unit and this unit gain 2,000 power. This ability repeats as you call throughout the turn. So by placing Horsa behind the Vanguard circle with Gurgit Helios as your Vanguard, you may repeatedly give the entire column 4,000 power over and over again for every call that you do, thus essentially making Gurgit Helios hit anywhere between the 70,000s to the 80,000s, with guard restrict and an extra drive check, making this a very powerful card. Of course, playing against decks that control your board on, during your turn, such as Kagero, Gear Chronicle, and Nubatama, this card can be targeted and sent away from the field during the turn you boost with it. But it is also important to remember that Helios will keep the power that it's obtained as well. So while it will lose the 7,000 plus the ha half of the power that you received to the column, Helios will still obtain those 2,000 powers that you've stacked from the rest of the calls you made of the turn. I'm making all of these very obvious statements right now. For Stride Fodder, you know what they do. PG of choice. Improve Falcon. Improve Falcon because Link Joker puts units back in the bottom of the deck and Yes. So the reason is also if you may ride this card, if you have to soul blast it, now you have a card in the drop zone to use its skill. You could also use its skill to make more calls during the turn to increase horse's power, thus extending the amount of power that you might need to win during the turn. So yes, my preferred PG in this deck will be Improved Falcon. Let's just pick you guys up and set you over here. For our triggers, we will be keeping Scarface Lion. As always, Scarface Lion is the, when your Vanguard attacks, if your Vanguard has the name with blank, you may pay the cost and move it to soul, draw a card and give it 5,000 power. I believe every clan has a version of this card. You all know what this does. This one specifically is for Mermaid. We're running the Margle clone, Flame of Victory, because I like the art, and we're running 12 crit. So Flame Victory skills, you know, act with a soul, give you a unit 3k. Ooh. For our last trigger, we're running Liberator Barb Truck. 
We're running it because it is a trigger that goes back in the deck and we don't need a better reason than that. So if we call it out with a skill such as maybe let's say Paramore and we got Horsa, no, where's, where is he? We got Horsa behind the Vanguard Circle. Let's say we use Paramore and we're like, oh no, it's three triggers. Oh, I don't want to keep, I don't want to lose triggers. We could still call Barb Truck, proc the skill Horsa, 2-2 two, two, to the Vanguard and Horsa. And then we go, oh, okay, well now that we gain power, we'll just put a Barb Truck back in the deck, shuffle, and yeah, we'll just keep those crits. So it still helps you stack up uh, power with Horsa and it still helps you get back in the deck. It shuffles the deck in case you keep stacking all your triggers on the bottom of your deck. So that's nice as well. So it's always nice to have a trigger with a skill. Speaking of triggers with skills, we run four copies of Liberator Shaggy Rabbit. We run Shaggy Rabbit because every clan wants this uh, bind two heals from drop to do counter charge or soul charge. So heals with good skills. Yes. Now let's get into the fun part. The part that will be leaving us soon in standard format, it will be the G units. Starting off with four copies of Holy Sword Heavenly Law Gurgit. Holy Sword Heavenly Law Gurgit's skill is act. Choose a face down copy of Holy Sword Heavenly Law Gurgit from your G zone and turn it face up. Choose one card from your hand and discard it. Until the end of the turn, this unit gets auto. Vanguard Unite. When this unit attacks, look at the top seven cards of your deck. Call one card from among the rear, shuffle your deck, and continuous. All of your units gain 2,000 power for each face-up card with Gurgit in its name in your G-Zone. So if you use this skill the first stride, all your units will gain 2,000 power. If you use it the second stride, all your units will gain 6. And also in continuing based on the number of Gurgits in your G-Zone. And continuing on with that skill, let's move on to the next Gurgit G unit. Being four copies of Master Swordsman of First Light. Gurgit Helios. Now Gurgit Helios is essentially the win condition of this deck, being that you can run 12 criticals, stack all the criticals on this card, and just be a sack and win. The point of this card is that, well, let me just read its ability first so you can understand. Act ability once per turn, unite. Choose a face down card with the same name as this unit G zone, turn it face up, and this unit gets drive plus one. So yes, you can use it during your first stride just for quad drive if you choose. Second skill is Generation Break 3. This unit gets 5,000 power for each of your rear guards. And your opponent cannot call a grade one or greater cards from their hand to the Guardian Circle during the battle that this unit attacks. So like I said before, by stacking Horsa power onto this unit and boosting, you will be able to swing for a much higher column than 51K. And considering that we run 12 criticals, you will be able to just essentially sack your way to a win. And because the unit has Gurgit in its name, if you choose to stride with this throughout the game and then return to striding into Heavenly Law, Heavenly Law Gurgit will receive more power based on the number of Gurgits that you have face up in your G-Zone. Now, let us move on to the rest of the G-Zone. We are running one copy of Sunrise Radi Ray Radiant Sword Gurgit, just because I really don't like using Glorious Raining anymore. I'm being very serious, guys. <laughs> Sunrise Ray Radiant Sword Gurgit skill is GB2 Unite Act, uh, Canvas 1 Soul Blast 2. This unit gets 5,000 power for each of my rear guards and choose up to five of my rear guards and main game 5,000 power. So this is a very, very, very situational card being that it would be not ideal to either go into Heavenly Law or Helios, which is, again, like this is like a mix of the two, being that Heavenly Law gives the whole field 5k, pop more than 5k on your second stride. Uh, this The ideal situation for this card would be like, you have six cards in soul and three face-up counter blasts and you just wanna like, have a bunch of power to your field and you don't, you know your opponent doesn't have a PG and you're just swinging with huge, huge, big number columns just because you can. Next we are running, of course, our very powerful Xeroth Dragon. Xeroth Dragon of Zenith Peak Ultima. Cost is Ultimate Stride. Choose a card with the same name as your Vanguard from your hand and discard it. You can stride this card onto your Vanguard Circle if you have uh, the number of cards facing from Genius 3 or more. Skill is when it's placed on Van, you may Counter Blast 2. Switch your trick for up to two cards, shuffle your deck, Choose two cards from among four cards, excuse me. Search for up to four cards from your deck. 
Shuffle your deck, choose two cards from a loom called in rear, and put the rest on the top of your deck. All your units receive trigger effects during tribe checks. So we are running 12 crits, so this card is literally just, I have nothing, I need some field, I just like need to crit my opponent, guaranteed need to double crit my opponent, so we're just gonna go into Ultima. And it doesn't hurt to do that every now and then, just like if you know your opponent can't PG, and you know that you just need to double crit your opponent to death, no matter what your field is, there's Ultima. Last but not least for our one of, we have Sabreeze. So yes, Sabri's skill is um, Sabri's skill is act. Counterblast two main phase act. Counterblast two choose a card from your hand and discard it. If you have a grade three Vanguard and the number of face up card in your G zones is zero, your opponent's Vanguard's at grade two, and no unit was placed on your opponent's Vanguard circle during the ride phase of your opponent's preceding turn, stride this card onto your Vanguard circle from face town, and this card. It's Cradle Mental, so it is, of course, of all clans and nations. So that was all of our one ofs in the deck, excluding the G Guardian, Rhea. Rhea's skill is when she is placed in the Guardian Circle from the cost of G Guardian. If I have two or more rear guards, this gains 5,000 shield. Next up for our G Guardians, we run two copies of Golden Beast Slay Me Flare. Slay Me Flare's skill is choose one of your rear guards from the bottom of your deck. When this unit is placed on the Guardian Circle, you may pay the cost. If you do, you look at the top five cards of your deck, choose two of different grades from among them, call them the guard, and then shuffle your deck. So you have anywhere between a 36 to 41k shield at your disposal with this card. Last but not least, the two copies of True Liberator Elise. We run two copies just because we might want to use the skill twice if we need a field to use Gurgit's Generation Break 2 interceptability, and because it's a nice to have shield value. So, you know, it's a pretty decent card considering maybe in another in another situation, if you have Militant Act Dragon and you need to have a rear guard on your field just to activate the stride skill, you can go into a lease and after the card is done guarding, it moves to the rear guard circle as you'll see after I read this card. Generation Break 1, choose a face down G Guardian from your G zone, turn it face up. When it's placed on guard, circle might pay the cost. If you do, look at two cards from the top of your deck. Call a card from among them to guard circle. Until the end of that battle, it gets guardian circle. When an attack does not hit, move this unit to rear. And put a card from among them to the bottom of your deck. So essentially, it's just look at top two, pick one, put in the guard, move the other one to the bottom, and if the attack doesn't hit, move it to rear. That concludes the Gurgit, clan leader, deck profile. If you liked what you saw, leave a comment, leave a like, subscribe. If you would like to see more deck profiles in the future, be sure to subscribe. Stay tuned for more fight videos. Stay tuned to more contents of me, of course. And we will see you all next time on Nexus Core.